Hi, I'm Calvis Jan Rice, and I'm the Director of Business Development at Integrated Packaging Solutions. And today's lecture is on the science of tear-off reduction. By the end of this short lecture, you should be able to first identify the most common tear-off in body makers, second, understand the cause of these tear-offs, and finally, understand how to eliminate the tear-offs. We'll be doing this today by building on your knowledge foundation. And this is going to start with the process of ironing. The body maker process has three main steps of metal forming. First is the redraw process during which the cup diameter is reduced, but metal wall thickness does not change. Second, the ironing process really the focus of this lecture, during which the can diameter is not changed, but the can wall is thin or ironed. And finally, the dome forming process, during which time the dome is formed and metal flows around the doming tools. In this animation, we will see the body maker process. The first step is the cup drops into the body maker and the first step is the redraw process, during which diameter changes, but metal is not thinned. Next, we will go into the ironing dies, and you can visibly see how the can length increases, and that is because of this ironing process, which we will go into more detail in a moment. Finally, it hits the domer, and the can drops out of the body maker. Here, in this animation, we see details of the ironing process. And the blue portion here is the ironing die. And to orient yourselves, down below here is the punch. And this right here is the metal. The punch and the metal move as one. And the thicker metal is thinned or ironed by the ironing die. And this ironing occurs around the land of the ironing die. So the essence of this is thicker metal enters the ironing die and thinner metal leaves the ironing die. And that is the ironing process. Next, we're going to talk about the science of tear-offs. In our industry, the most common type of tear-off is the tensile tear-off. And tensile tear-offs are going to be easy to identify. There's two main ways to identify these tear-offs. The first one is being able to find a smooth band around the punch. And so, as we see here, if you take a can that has had a tensile tear-off, and lay it next to a punch, oftentimes you will see the tear-off edge of the can line up with a brighter, a visibly smoother band around the punch. And we'll go into more details later of the cause of that band and how it causes tear-offs, but this is a great visual indicator that tells you that you're having a tensile tear-off. Secondly, it is the jagged, torn edge. And we have three examples here of how that looks. And so these jagged, torn edges of tensile tear-offs are all caused by tensile stress. So what is tensile stress? Well, in essence, with enough tensile stress or pulling, material will eventually fail or tear apart, as we see here. Aluminum will do the same thing. So in this short video, which is a time lapse of a test performed on aluminum, there's force applied on either end. And as you will see, the aluminum elongates before it ev eventually fails and tears. Now this is exactly what we want to eliminate or prevent from happening inside the body maker on the can wall. And so back to this animation, now that we understand what tensile forces are, we want to show some more captions 
on the screen here with the context that you now have of what tensile force is. And so the punch and the metal are again moving as one to the left. And we have a tensile force here. And so this tensile force is in essence caused by the pulling from the punch nose. The punch is moving to the left and the dome of or the end of the can is captured on that nose so that's causing the tensile force moving to the left now counter to that force is our tensile force moving to the right which is the pulling force from the ironing process now the ironing process actually has two forces one is a compressive force but the other is a tensile force moving in the opposite direction of the tensile force from the pulling from the punch nose. There's actually another force that we don't have shown here, and that's the force of friction between the punch and the metal. And the force of friction is what allows the punch and the metal to move as one. And we'll go into why that force of friction is important here in a moment. So where do tear-offs occur? Back to this image here, we want to show you that now zoomed out, we understand that this tensile force to the left is caused by the pulling of the can from the punch nose. And this tensile force right here is caused from the ironing process. Now, most tensile tear-offs occur post ironing die in this area right here on the third ironing die during which you have the largest reduction. When do tear-offs occur? In a more scientific context, tear-offs occur when tensile forces overcome the frictional forces between the punch and aluminum. Or, simply put, tear-offs occur when the metal slips on the punch surface. So finally, we're going to talk about tear-off reduction methods. And by far, the easiest way to eliminate tensile tear-offs are through friction. Increasing friction on the punch surface keeps the aluminum from slipping. And cross-hatching is by far the most common and effective method of increasing friction between the punch and aluminum. So there's a few things that make up the basics of cross-hatching. And in this video, we'll show you that first, the punch needs to rotate. Second, we need to have diamond media, which is the abrasive, and we need to apply pressure onto the punch surface. And finally, there is a back and forth motion which you will also see a touchdown and a liftoff point on the punch. There's a number of variables associated with cross hatching, and we're going to go into a bit more details on them in a moment, but from a high level, the cross hatch angle is one variable. Another is the diamond media surface roughness or grade. Another is the application pressure. A variable are the liftoff points, where you touch down onto the punch and where you pull back off of the punch. And finally, operator influence is a variable in the process. So why does crosshatch angle matter? First, to give you a bit of context and let you better understand how we define the angle. Here on the right hand side, we have a zoomed in image of an actual cross hatch. And this black line here represents the punch center line. So as we refer to cross hatch angle would be between these two red lines here. And when talking about cross hatch angle, a higher angle is good because it provides more friction between the punch and aluminum. But counter to that, a lower angle is better for two reasons. First, it removes aluminum oxide from the punch surface. And so right now we're going to circle back to these bands around the punch that we identified with the tensile type tear-off. 
These bands on the punch are caused by aluminum oxide, which is part of the ironing process and over lots and lots of cans being iron, small amounts of aluminum oxide can deposit on the surface of the punch. And in essence, in essence, the aluminum oxide polishes the punch very slightly. And so if the aluminum oxide is not moved away from the punch surface, bands such as these can appear prematurely. So a lower crosshatch angle allows the aluminum oxide to move away from the punch surface. A lower angle also improves the stripping of the can off of the punch. So what we found is the optimal crosshatch angle is 60 degrees and it accomplishes all of the things that we're looking for. Good friction characteristics, Removable, removal of aluminum oxide from the punch surface, and improved stripping characteristics. Now, why does media grade and application pressure matter? First off, up here, we see various grades of diamond media. They vary in density and the actual size of the diamond media itself. So media grade and the application pressure together determine the punch surface roughness. And the optimal punch surface roughness is 12 micro inches RA. And this is relative to the surface roughness of aluminum. It's approximately half of the surface roughness of aluminum. And there's a lot more details around this, but for a starting place for a crosshatch, 12 micro inches RA is a very good place to start. So why do liftoff points matter? Well, we've already determined that the body of the punch should have a cross satch surface finish to aid in the can wall ironing process, meaning that we want the aluminum and the punch to move as one with no slipping. What we also know is that the punch nose should be a polished finish, and this actually aids in the dome forming process. So we want one area of the punch to be cross-hatched, and we want one area to be polished. So cross-hatching too far, just like cross-hatching not enough, could cause problems, which is why consistent liftoff points are important. Finally, why does operator influence matter? Well, up until this point, we've already determined that consistency is critical. Angle matters, pressure matters, liftoff points matter, and one piece we haven't talked about yet are the number of passes. Because consistency is important, what we want is the same number of crosshatch passes on all portions of the punch. We don't want one portion of the punch to have one pass of a crosshatch media and another portion of the punch to have two because this could cause a dif different or inconsistent surface finish. And tear-offs are simply more likely to occur in areas of inconsistent surface finish. Now, crosshatching rather than not crosshatching will give you a much better performing punch. However, if when you do have tear-offs, you're much more likely to have a tear-off in areas where you have inconsistent crosshatch. So operator influence simply must be limited to achieve crosshatch consistency. And during manual crosshatching, we know how many variables are involved. The operator during a manual process is always the weakest link of the crosshatch. So IPS provides the X2 crosshatch machine, and we've been selling these for about eight years. This year, we will sell the 100th machine globally, and it has become the industry standard for performance, consistency, and reliability. This is an automated, autom automated crosshatching machine that eliminates operator influence. It has a programmable crosshatch angle, it has controlled application pressure. It has adjustable liftoff points. And we offer a various grades of the diamond media. 
So in summary, in this lecture, we talked about the problem, high rates of tensile tear-offs in body makers. The cause is because aluminum is slipping on the punch during the ironing process. And the solution is simple, adding friction to the punch surface by cross-hatching. If you enjoyed this lecture, if you learned something, we please encourage you to like this video, whether you saw it on YouTube or LinkedIn, or forward it to a colleague or a coworker that could benefit from this. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to email, call us, or visit our website. Thank you for watching.